Okay, hey everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hope you've had a great TDX so far. My name is Galen Lewis. I am a PM on Salesforce's mobile platform team. We work on the foundation of Salesforce's mobile apps, and we also make it easier for you guys as customers to build custom apps that connect to Salesforce. And I'm joined today by Dr. Shelby Heineke. Hi, everyone. Super excited to be here today. I'm Shelby, and I lead an AI research team here at Salesforce. And one of our key areas is mobile AI. So super excited to tell you about our, our ideas today. And together, our teams are collaborating to do on-device AI for Salesforce Mobile. So I'll kick off, I'll walk through some of the use cases that we're exploring, talk about what's on our roadmap, and then I'll hand it over to Shelby to talk about the AI that's powering it. Before we jump in, we have our forward-looking statements. We're going to talk about stuff that's on the roadmap, not in GA yet. Let's get started. So to start, why is mobile important to a company like Salesforce? Short answer is that more and more people are doing work from their phones. You have industries like field service and field sales that are mostly on the go, spending the majority of their day not at a desktop, always on mobile to get their job done. Then you have people like me, I definitely fit into this category, probably a lot of you in the audience, work mostly from desktop, but also check in on work from your phone. So a lot of people are using mobile to at least some degree, and that's why Salesforce mobile apps have a combined 6.3 million active users. And when we think about AI on mobile, the cloud isn't necessarily the best place for it to live. A lot of our customers have strict privacy requirements, and a lot of our mobile users don't always have the best internet connection. With on-device AI, it works offline, it keeps sensitive data local to the device, and as we'll see in a bit, it can actually be faster than hitting the server. For these reasons, Shelby and I think that on-device AI is the future of AI on mobile. Let's talk about use cases. And the first one I want to tell you about is for field sales. So field sales people, they're on the go. They're preparing for and following up on meetings from their phone a lot of the time. And there's a couple of problems that they experience. One is that phone screens are small. And it can be hard to do work from a small screen. I think we can all relate to that. AI can help with this because we can create a more voice-driven UX where you can talk to access and update your data more naturally, more conversationally. But another issue is that AI requires an internet connection. And as I mentioned, mobile users don't always have that internet connection. This is where on-device AI can help. Let's take a look at how. So here we can see we're in Salesforce mobile app. We open up Einstein, and we talk to it, and we give it a prompt to generate UI. We say, show me my five largest opportunities. That prompt gets fed to the LLM. The LLM converts it to SQL, all running on device. And we get back these opportunities. This isn't just text being rendered on the screen. This is functional UI. So we can click into any of these to get more information on them. We can ask a follow-up question. We can say, show it to me as a pipeline. It'll render it in a different view. Now we can instantly filter by the stage of the opportunity that we're looking at. You can also see we scroll up, and we can tell that we converted that to SQL, and it's actually printing that SQL on the screen. This is an early way to give the user some transparency into what the LLM understood them to be asking for. But anyways, these are the opportunities that we've generated. We can now click into any of them. So if we check out Riverbend Clinic Diagnostic Systems, we can see the details of this opportunity. And we can dig into the details, view the meeting transcript that we have associated with it. And we can accept multimodal input. So we can take a photo, upload that from our camera roll. It's pulling the text from that photo and adding it. We're giving the LLM some more data to work with. And now we can ask it questions against that meeting transcript. So we say, what are the next steps? And you can see how fast this is running. We're just taking maybe three seconds to get this result. And now it's streaming the output. The next steps are that Jordan committed to sending a revised proposal the next day. And he agreed to follow up with the client at the end of the week to review the proposed changes. So again, all of this is running on device. We have a 2.7 billion parameter model that's fitting on the device, staying within the limits of the device's RAM. Shelby will tell you more about that in a bit. But that's a bit about the use case for salespeople. But field sales isn't the only use case that we're looking at. Another is field service. And field service is actually Salesforce's largest mobile app by revenue. The problem that a lot of our field service customers have is that there's a huge technician shortage. So they have to get more done with less. And on-device AI can help with that. Let's take a look. Audio. Mm 
possibly hold in your head or have the time Should we start to go over? through millions of manuals, expert advice, and training materials. That's why 81% of field service technicians end up calling an expert to ask for help. But what if you could just call Einstein? Well, let's see that in a live demo. First, let's turn off our connectivity. Many technicians have to deal with conditions that have no internet connection. Einstein helps Danny, our technician, with a specific question about an error code by accessing an on-device LLM, XGen, developed right here at Salesforce. And the result is not just summarization. These are just-in-time, tailored instructions, effectively leveling up our technicians in real time, while also enhancing trust by referencing the exact place in the documentation. Now that's trusted AI, right in your pocket. So at this point, I've told you a bit about field service and field sales. Those are two of the first use cases we're exploring. But I want to emphasize that we're building this as a platform for all of Salesforce. And that means we're exploring how this could show up in Slack and our other mobile apps. It also means we're exploring how this could show up in mobile SDK for external developers to take tailored to use cases and build on top of it to solve your own problems with on-device AI. At this point, you might be wondering, what exactly is this platform doing? So you can't just take an AI model, download it to the device, plug it into the UI of an app and just have it work out of the box. There's a lot of platform architecture that goes into that. We're building model management and model execution to run the AI, prompt caching for performance. We have to build in logic for memory management so that we can stay within the limits of the device's RAM, which is very limited on mobile, make sure that we're not crashing the app. Also on our platform roadmap are an on-device embeddings model and vector database so we can do things like retrieval augmented generation, which Shelby will tell you more about in a bit. All of this we're building at the platform level to make it easier to bring into the mobile apps. You might also be wondering, how does this relate to Einstein Copilot, which I'm sure you've heard so much about? On-device AI can exist as its own thing and also within Copilot. Because as you saw in that first demo video, we can generate UI in just two or three seconds. That's significantly faster than hitting the server for that task. So it's not only for offline use cases, we see a future where we can intelligently decide between on-device and on-cloud AI based on what's going to be faster, what's going to be better for that task at hand. So this is early stage stuff. We have a big vision for it. We want to put AI on a completely new class of devices. It's really uncharted territory. We want to get it to you as soon as we can. With that, I want to turn it over to Shelby to talk more about the AI that's underneath. Awesome. So yeah, thanks so much, Galen. And talking about uncharted territory, that is what I'm going to tell you about today. So the two demos Galen just showed us, the field service and the sales, just show a glimpse of the potential of what we could achieve. And the platform that Galen, is built, Galen and team are building, that is going to enable us to be among the first in the market to bring these LLMs to customers. So we're super excited about this. There's just huge potential in having an LLM directly on your mobile device. And so today, yeah, we're talking about the future. And so here is an outline of our vision to power mobile with in-house LLMs. And it all starts with a strong mobile LLM. And we're building that right in-house. And so these are going to be in-house, small but mighty LLMs that are performing really well on everyday tasks. And we envision them for Einstein for field service and Einstein for sales. Now, I want to give you a sneak peek on how this is actually built. How would you actually build an LLM for a mobile device? There are some things you need to consider. So let's take a step back and think about mobile devices versus cloud. Now, we probably today you've heard about LLMs all day, large language models. And you, you know a lot on the top of your head, chat GPT, other names, right on the top of your head. And those LLMs live in the cloud. They are hosted and served by cloud providers. And so what that means is, when it comes to memory, for example, they can use as much memory as they need because they're on this cloud server. The other thing to take into account with LLMs hosted on the cloud is that in order to access them, you need the internet. You need the internet in order to call the API to access that LLM. Now, let's switch our focus back to mobile devices. That's, that's the key for today. Mobile devices, even high-end ones, have maybe six gigabytes of memory, give or take, right? We're not talking about a lot of memory here. 
So any LLM we develop has to fit within that, really significantly less than six gigabytes. And memory is only just one constraint we have to think about. We've got to think about compute. So servers um, and cloud providers, you kind of can purchase the CPUs and GPUs you need there. Whereas on a phone, you're limited to what's there. And we know that, that, that there's significantly less than on the cloud, right? And finally, we've got to think about storage. Again, on phones, give or take something like 64 gigabytes, some have more. The point is, it's very constrained. Whereas on the cloud, you don't have to worry about it. You just, you could pay for more, right? So the mobile device, the key here is that the mobile device is an extremely constrained environment. So we need to make, build LLMs, which we're doing in-house, that are small enough to fit on the mobile device. And one of the biggest uh, properties that determines if a, how big a, a LLM is, is its number of parameters. So you've probably heard that term being thrown around a lot. Basically, what I mean by that is a parameter is the number, the parameters is the number of weights in the deep neural network, right? These are all deep neural networks at the end of the day. The number of weights there is the number of parameters. And so you can see a quick comparison here. We just jotted down a few known LLMs, and you can see the sizing here. So really big LLMs are hundreds of billions of parameters, okay? And remember, each of those parameters uh, you know, is, is, a, is a number, right? So it has to be stored in memory. And so you can, see that we're, you can see that large language models, hundreds of billions of parameters. And the more parameters it has, the more weights it has, essentially the more concepts it can learn. So it's no surprise today we're seeing bigger and bigger LLMs emerge. They're just very well, they're performant, right? But here's the thing. 540 billion parameter model is not going to fit on a mobile device. So what size will fit on a mobile device? So we've done some initial studies and some experiments. And guess what, everyone? It's around 7 billion parameter model. Look how much smaller that is compared to some of the other LLMs out there. 7 billion parameters or less is what we're looking at for on-device um, LLMs. So significantly smaller. And what does that mean? As I mentioned before, the number of parameters tells you uh, really how much it can learn, its learning capacity. And the phone can only hold 7 billion parameters or less. So we've got to think about performance here, right? So we've got to think about performance. How do we optimize performance? Which means maximize the number of parameters we can, while at the same time also, also optimizing our latency. That's another issue. On the, the bigger the model, the slower it, the latency. So the, the longer it takes to process input, the longer it takes to generate output. So we've got to balance these two things. How can we? build a model that's big enough to perform well on mobile, but small enough to be super fast on mobile. And so we've built a model in-house called XGen Small that strikes just the right balance. Meet XGen Small. This is our in-house LLM trained right here at Salesforce. And it strikes just the right balance of performance and latency. It has 3.8 billion parameters. It's a great number. So remember I told you that maximum was around 7 billion. So this is a great, great number, 3.8 billion parameters. It's trained on 1.5 trillion tokens. So in other words, a lot of data. It's a, great, it's a great LLM. It's storage. Look at that storage. It has a small footprint, 2.1 gigabytes after quantization. OK, so it's not taking up too much space on the phone. And its context length is 8,000 8, tokens at most. So uh, just a little bit more on XGen Small. Um, our experiments are showing that XGen Small is performance. It outperforms other open source small LLMs on some quality metrics that you may or may not be aware of, such as Alpaca Eval and MT Bench. So that's a good sign. The quality, even though it's small, the quality is still there, which is great. It's efficient. Again, at 3.8 billion parameters, it's low latency. The input is processed quickly and the output is generated quickly. And most importantly, this is, this is our number one value, it's trusted. It's trained on open source, consented, and representative data, and the training data is both legally and ethically reviewed. Now, Action Small lays a strong foundation for our, for our mobile LLMs. That is where all this is based off. But 
we need to continue to increase our on-device capabilities. So with that strong foundation, we envision RAG-enabled mobile LLMs. So building on-device uh, retrieval augmented generation with our, with our mobile LLM. And that's going to be um, in partnership with the mobile platform that's building that vector database that you need for re retrieval augmented generation. And the, second is, um, and the second way we plan to expand the capabilities of XGen Small is through fine tuning. And so fine tuning just simply means taking domain specific data or task specific data and training it even more so that the performance is even better for like the use cases, right? And so a couple of applications here. So for the RAG, uh, for on-device RAG, you actually saw a demo of that. In the field service demo, that is our vision for on-device RAG to enable our frontline workers to be able to go to a job, work on some nuanced piece of equipment, and get the repair information they need right instantly. Yeah, all right on device. So that's the vision for RAG. And for fine tuning, one potential application there is not just Copilot, but offline Copilot. We, we have a vision of fine tuning XGen small on action data so that we can build a on-device planner which could power offline Copilot. So Copilot with no internet needed. OK, and now we've arrived at the end of our vision for today. And thus far, we've talked about text, right? We've talked a lot about text. In interacting with XGen Small, interacting with our models by, um, by writing messages, by conversation. But now I want to go to the next step. We, we believe that it's going to be extremely useful to be able to um, interact with more, with, uh, to interact across multiple modalities. So imagine a mobile LLM that could process image, that could process audio, that could process video inputs. So let me give you a quick, quick uh, thought there. So imagine you're a frontline worker again in the field service industry. And instead of just texting XGen Mobile asking, how do I repair this nuanced equipment? What if you could take a picture of the washing machine that's broken and get, and get um, repair information? What if you could record a video of that blinking red light and get help on how to repair it? Or what if you could record the sound of the broken washing machine and get help that way? We believe this is all possible, and this is an active research direction we are working on. OK, and so with that, uh, that gave you a glimpse of all that we have in store for mobile AI. So just to wrap up, Galen presented the mobile AI platform. This is an SDK, one of the first of its kind, one of the first in the industry that is enabling LLMs and vector databases on mobile apps. So this is huge, OK? And so in addition to that, here at Salesforce, we are building in-house mobile LLMs that will plug into that platform, such as XGen Small, and the mobile multimodal model that I talked about, both of these together are going to power on-device and offline CRM for field service, sales, co-pilot, and beyond. Thanks so much. So yeah, definitely stay tuned on our progress in this cutting edge direction. This is really the front, one of the new frontiers of AI. We're super excited about it. And as you wait for our progress on this, um, definitely learn more. So check out Einstein Expert. Try XGen for free. So XGen is our family of in-house LLMs. It's openly available. It's freely available. Check it out on GitHub. And follow our journey on uh, salesforceairesearch.com. We're always posting blogs about our newest innovations. You'll probably be seeing innovations about mobile AI very soon. And as always, your feedback is always appreciated. Follow the QR code, leave us feedback. Thank you so much, everyone.